Hello everyone, welcome to another session for our ARD MCQ series. Uh, for today's topic, I've chosen on forestry. My name is Hansa Nora and I've done my Bachelor of in Horticulture, Honours, and I've also completed my Master's in Dermatology in Agriculture. Please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. And if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well as share it with your friends who have is giving the exam. Okay, first and foremost, we need to understand what a forest is. So here I've given some definition of a forest and two definitions of forestry as well. Forest, it is defined as an area which is set aside for the production of timber and other forest products or man mainland under woody vegetation for certain indirect benefits which is provided. That is uh, climatic as well as protective okay so uh, and forestry it can be defined as a study or a theory and practices that constitutes all the creation conservation and scientific management of forests and the utilization of their forests so it's basically when we create the whole forest from the seed and you when you conserve it and the manage scientific management as well and the use of the byproducts from the forest as well so forestry it is a science and a craft of creating managing using conserving and repairing the forest the woodlands and associated resources from for human and environmental benefits okay so these are the two definitions of forestry and the forest. So moving on to the next slide. Here I've given the types of forests. So it's particularly for this one, it's the type of forest in India. Okay, so forests can be basically divided classified on the basis of method of regeneration can be uh, divided on the basis of age, its composition, the object, growing stock, as well as the uh, ownership okay so but for this one it's based mostly based on the environment and the climatic factors so these are the types of uh, forests which can be found which can be classified in india right so the first one here is conifers and it is uh, and the second one is broadleaf it is divided into conifers and broadleaves and broadleaves can be further divided into certain subclasses like evergreen forests like wet evergreen deciduous semi evergreen uh, there are two more uh, forests, which is uh, thorny as well as mangroves. Okay, so these are some of the sub uh, forests under the broadleaf forest. So let's just discuss what a conifer is. So basically, conifer they are present in a high altitude. And if you talk about it, it's, it'll be in India. It'll be mostly present in. Um, in the Himalayan regions, okay, where the, uh, the temperature is low. And the leaves for these conifers, they are pine-like or the needle-like. And they are soft twigs and they are gymnosperms, right? So some examples, maybe Cedrus deodera, Pinus wallichiana. So these are the conifers. So here I've given the picture of a forest of a conifers. So let's go to the broadleaf. Broadleaf are nothing but these are, as the name suggests, broadleaves. So they are mostly present in the tropical or subtropical or subtemperate regions, right? And these are hardwood. These are mostly dicots, all right? And these can uh, be subdivided into evergreen. So what is an evergreen forest? So evergreen forest, these are basically uh, the trees or the forests that grow in more of a, uh, that need the requirements of a humid conditions or a higher rainfall, right? So for some of the examples, uh, it may be found in the Western Ghats or the Northeastern regions or in South India as well, okay? So this is an evergreen forest. So what is an ev a wet evergreen forest? A wet evergreen forest is nothing. It's the same like evergreen forest, but it just needs a, a higher, more amount of rainfall. So it is backed up by a high rainfall, right? And these are mostly found in the same areas, but with a higher rainfall, like in the, the northeastern region or in the south or in the western gods. So these are the places where you can find the wet evergreen, right? And deciduous, deciduous is nothing where, uh, but forests or trees which shed their leaves 
during winter or a harsh area, harsh climatic conditions, right? So these are deciduous trees. And semi-evergreen, it's nothing but a combination of a wet evergreen plus a deciduous. So as the name suggests, the semi-evergreen is a combination of a wet evergreen and deciduous. All right, so going to the thorny forest. A thorny forest can be mostly found in uh, semi-arid areas. All right, so usually they, are, they have a particular uh, features. Uh, the trees or the plants that are, that are grown in these thorny areas, they have a small leaves, they have thick leaves as well as they have a waxy leaves so why do they have these characteristics it's because they need to conserve the water since it's grown in a very dry or a semi-arid area and there'll be a lesser rainfall so to conserve the water they need such characteristics uh, in the plants so that these can conserve the water and reduce the evaporation rate all right and these are uh, these are also known as a xerophytic species so these xerophytic species have all these characteristics, all right? Mangroves, going to mangroves, these man, uh, mangroves are usually found in the coastal or the delta region, all right? And these trees or the forests, they are mostly grown in a mixture of uh, saline as well as the fresh water, right? So uh, I've discussed uh, on the mangroves in the previous lectures. So, uh, if you can list out the mangroves in India, uh, don't forget to comment in the comment section, all right? Right, so let's go to the first question. The first question says the Indian forest research was commenced after the establishment of Forest Research Institute in Dehradun. Okay, so when was this established? The options here are 1986, 1996, 1906, 1894, and 1967. So the right answer for this is number C, which is 1906. All right, so let's just uh, understand what this Forest Research Institute is okay. So it started off as a British Imperial Forest School, it was, which was established in 1878, all right? And it was initially it was named as an Imperial Forest Research Institute, and after that they um, named it as FRI, which came into being in 1906. Okay, and this Forest Research Institute, uh, it is an institute which is under the Indian Council of Forestry Research and Education, right? And it is a premier institution in the field of forestry research in India. So it is located in Uttarakhand, Dehradun. In 1991, it was declared as the deemed university by the UGC. Okay, so let's go to the second question. The second question is, according to the 19, uh, sorry, according to the 1878 Act, which of the following categories of forests is considered as the best on the basis of their utility? The options here given are reserved forests, uh, B is protected forests, vill village forests, D, farm forests, and E, community forests. Okay, so let's just understand what this uh, 1878 Act is, okay? So here, this 1878 Act is also known as the Indian Forest Act. So uh, what it did was that it divided the Indian Forest into various um, three categories, which is a reserved forest, a protected forest, and a village forest, okay? So what is this reserved forest a reserved forest is a forest which is completely owned by the government and it's controlled completely by the government so basically any intruders or any trespassers uh, by villagers or any community is prohibited right and in protected forest this is partly government controlled so it means that some uh, uh, some community or some part of the community or the villages can be allowed to uh, go and do the activities in this protected forest. So a village forest is completely controlled by the abutting villages. Okay, so let's just read out some of the important points of these acts. Okay, so the act was further amended and succeeded by the Indian Forest Act of 1927. Remember, there are two. The first one here was 1878, and after that, it got succeeded and it formed the, for the Indian Forest Act of 1927. 27. Right, so this both this uh, 
1878 Act and the 1927 Act, they sought to consolidate and reserve the areas having forest cover or the significant wildlife to regulate a movement and a transit of forest produce and duty leviable on timber and other forest produce. Right. Okay. So it is. It also defines the procedure to be followed for declaring an area to be a reserved forest, a protected forest, or a village forest. So it showed the uh, demarcation or the lines between these three uh, uh, categories of the forest. Okay. So uh, it also defines what is a forest offense. Where are the acts prohibited? Inside a reserve forest and penalties liable on the violation of the provisions of the act, right? Okay, so the best forests were called the reserved forest. And here the villagers could not take anything from the forest and even for their own use, right? And for suppose for a house building or a fuel, they could take the wood or the products from the protected or the village forest only. So this reserved forest is completely prohibited for, for any human interactions. Okay, so the right answer for here is number A, which is a reserved forest. So since we've already uh, talked, let's just discuss all of these terms together. Okay, so the reserved forest, we already know. A protected forest is also, we already discussed. A village forest, we already discussed. And a farm forest. A farm forest is nothing but a forest where... Um, where where there's an integration of um, agriculture as well as livestock as well as the forest so it's like a whole dynamic uh, integration right so this is known as a farm forest community forest is nothing but a forest which is owned by a small community or a uh, part of the community where they can have their regular activities or they can get their products or they can use the uh, have the interaction with the forest right okay so let's go to the third question which says consider the following institutes which are under ICFRE okay so we have to state whether all, uh, each of the uh, from amongst all these which one is the true all right so uh, the Institute of Wood Science and Technology here we have given Bangalore Arid Forest Research Institute is Jodhpur Institute of Forest Productivity is in Wanchi Rainforest Research Institute is in Johar. So the options here are 1 and 2 only. Number B is 4 only. C, 1, 2 and 4 only. 3 is, D is 3 only. And E is all of the above. So the right answer for this is all of the above as all of these institutes are located in the adjacent cities or place, all right? Okay, so here in this slide, I've given some of the research institutes which are under the uh, ICFRE. These are the list of research institute, but I haven't given the, uh, where the date of establishment. So don't forget to jot down or try to search for the date of establishment of all these research institutes as it is a very important topic. So anytime uh, they can just ask, they can just give the acronyms and they can just ask the full form for it as well. Or maybe they can ask for its location as well as when it was established. Okay, so let's just go through. Um, the first one is Arid Forest Research Institute, which is which is AFRI, which is present, in, which is located in Jodhpur. Forest Research Institute is in Dehradun. Himalayan Forest Research Institute is in Shimla and Institute of Forest Biodiversity is in Hyderabad. Institute of Forest Genetics and Tree Breeding is in Coimbatore. And Forest Research in Forest it's sorry, Institute of Forest Productivity is in Ranchi. Right, so Institute of Wood Science and Technology is located in Bangalore and Forest Research Institute is in Johat. So this Forest Research Institute it's also the same, but this, the Jorhat one is the Regional Forest Research Institute, okay? And here, this is just the Forest Research Institute. In the same way, we have a Tropical Forest Research Institute, which is in Jabalpur, all right? So, um, other than that, we have, we also have an Advanced Research Centers, which is under the council, all right? So, some of the Advanced Research Centers here are uh, Advanced Research Center for Bamboo and Rattans, which is located in Aizol, and Center for Forest Livelihood and Extension, CFLE, which is in Agartala, and Center for Forestry Research and Human Resource Development is in Chinwara. Center for Social Forestry and Eco Rehabilitation is located in 
Allah Habat. So try to remember all these names, okay, the, acron uh, the acronyms and the full form of all of these and the uh, establishment date as well as where it's located. Let's just roughly know, understand what this ICFRE is. So I've just given, highlighted the objective of what they do. If we know the establishment date or when it was launched, uh, the headquarter as well, comment in the comment section and please do let me know so that I'll be knowing whether you are aware of this council or not, right? Okay, so let's just understand what this ICFRE they do, okay? So it is an apex body which is in the national in the national forestry research system and it has been undertaking the holistic development of forestry research through need-based planning through promoting conducting and coordinating research education and extension covering all the aspects of forestry so these these are its activities and what they do all right so don't forget to if you know some facts about this don't forget to comment in the comment section all right so let's go to our fourth question a fourth question consider the following statement on alley cropping and we have to state whether it's true or not all right so here the first one uh, the first statement says alley cropping is also known as a hedgerow intercropping so the Second one says, the trees, they are managed as hedgerows, they are grown in white rows, and the crop is planted in the interspace or alley between the tree rows. And here, the third one is, alley cropping, they usually include a use of leguminous tree. The options here are A, 1 only, B, 1 and 2 only, C, 2 and 3, D, none of the above, and E is all of the above. So the right answer for this is all of the above, as all of these statements are true on the basis of alley cropping. So I'll just roughly discuss what an alley cropping is. So basically, alley cropping is a plantation system under the agroforestry system where they plant the trees, where they incorporate trees as well as the crops, agriculture crops. All right. So suppose here in this way, they'll in this manner, they'll be planting some trees, and here in between they'll be growing some agricultural crops all right so this area is known as the uh, looks like an alley so they've the so the name alley cropping came from the term all right so here in between they'll be crop uh, growing the agricultural crops and here on the sides it's grown and it can be repeated as suppose agriculture crops and trees trees agriculture crops and trees so this is like a repetition of that. So in this way, it looks like an alley. This area, it looks like an alley, right? So here in the next slide, I've just given roughly uh, a visual diagram of how an alley cropping would look like, right? And here it's a layout of an alley cropping, okay? So, okay. So an alley cropping, as you can see in the picture, these are the trees which is grown in rows here, okay? And in between these two, these trees, uh, in this area grow some agricultural crop all right so this system is known as the alley cropping what's the purpose of this alley cropping so this alley cropping the primary purpose of alley cropping is to maintain or increase the crop yields by improvement of the soil microclimate and weed control right so the farmers they all may also obtain tree products from the hedgerows including fieldwood building poles food, medicine, fodder, etc. In this perennial, preferably leguminous trees or shrubs are grown simultaneously with an arable crop. So the trees managed as hedgerows are grown in wide rows and the crop is planted in the space or the alley between the tree rows. Okay, so basically what this they grow mostly leguminous plants and, and during the cropping seasons what they do is that they prune the uh, twigs and the leaves of the trees so that they'll be able to use those pruned portion as a mulch and they'll be using it so that it'll what so what this mulch will do is that it'll actually uh, conserve the soil moisture as well as the it will increase the organic matter, right, because of decomposition, right? So in this way, it can also act as a weed suppressant as well as, and it creates a whole mi good microclimate for the whole uh, plant, right? So in this way, it's a very beneficial system, right? So these are, these can be some of the advantages of the alley cropping, right? 
and here in this layout i'm just going to explain to you something about it so this this is known as the alley the interspace is known as the alley as you can see here the crops which are grown in the alleys are known as the alley crop right so these are the trees which is grown in the tree row so basically um the distance between these two trees uh, it's mostly about four to eight these are the standard spacing all right and within the trees within the rows it can vary from two meter right so but then these all these standard spacing can also vary from place to place mostly for arid regions it can come up to like say about two to four meter between these two trees and within the row spacing it can come up to like one meter so usually the in arid regions or in semi-arid areas they need a lesser spacing okay so no more of like uh, where it's wet uh, where there's a lot of moisture then we need a larger spacing so this is basically a simple thing about uh, alley cropping all right so these are under the agroforestry systems Okay, so our last question here is based on agroforestry system again. So let's just go through the question together. The question says a coffee-based agroforestry system belong to which of the silviculture system? So let's just understand what this agroforestry is. Okay, so agroforestry is nothing. It is defined as a dynamic, ecologically based natural resource management system that through the integration, integration of the trees, which is on the farms as well and they add these agricultural landscapes and they diversifies and sustains production for ag increased social economical and environmental benefits for land users at all levels so this is a definition of agroforestry so basically it's an integration of trees of forest of livestock and agriculture together in a farm to create a more sustainable um agriculture or the system right so uh, let us understand so this agroforestry can be divided on the basis of structure on the basis of function on the basis of socio-economic ecological and ecological right so uh, out of all these these are all important um, classes of basis of the classification but like most of the times questions are asked from the structural as well so so what is the structural it is the composition of the components which includes the spatial admixture of the woody component vertical stratification of the component which is mixed with arid temporal arrangements of the different components and functional it is based on the major function or the role of the different components of the system mainly of the woody component these can be product example a production of food fuel uh, fodder and or maybe for protective such as like windbreaks shelter belts soil conservation and so on right and for socioeconomic they consider the level of input of management so the low there'll be a lower input and high input or intensively or scale of management and commercial goals maybe subsistence commercial or intermediate so on the basis of ecological it takes into account the environmental conditions remember on the assumptions that certain types of systems can be more appropriate for certain ecological conditions right these can be set off an agroforestry systems for arid and semi-arid land sector so this structural basis can be further subdivided in uh, on the basis of nature of component and arrangement of component all right so these can be further divided into nature of component as well as the arrangement of component under nature of component can be further subdivided into four classes or four groups or categories namely agri silviculture Silvi pastoral we have agri agro silvi pastoral and we have other systems and these other systems can be further divided into aquaforestry be divided into an apiculture for epi apiforestry multi-purpose woodlots right so let's just discuss all of these systems and these practices together so what is this agri silviculture so agri silviculture as the name suggests it's a combination or integration of an agriculture crop with the trees of the forest basically it's a growing of agriculture crops in a forest 
or it's a combination of both. So Sylvie Pastoral and Sylvie Pastoral, as the name suggests, Sylvie, which means uh, trees or forest, right? Along with the pastoral with the livestock. So basically they can, uh, the grazing uh, can be done in the forest land. as can incorporate the trees in the pastures for fuel wood or timber, right? So in this way, they become very mutualistic and they gain from each other. So this agro sylvic pastoral is a combination of agro sylvi and sylvi pastoral. So it makes about agriculture plus livestock plus silviculture. So it's basically an incorporation of agriculture and livestock as well as the uh, trees or the fruit trees, right? And s further, this can be divided into um, home garden as well as a woody hedgerow. So basically, this home garden, as you can see in every home or in a farm, you can you always see uh, integration of a chicken or a livestock or poultry or figury or um, all of that along with they'll be planting some agriculture crops as well as they'll be having some trees or fruit trees. So this is the most... Um, ancient and the predominant type of this agro silvi pastoral right and um, in other so, so in the other systems we have this aquaforestry aqua which means water and forestry so it's in an incorporation of aquaculture with forestry so what we what we do here is that they usually plant the trees or the plants around the pond or which are required by the fish, right? So in apiculture, in the second year, apiculture, they suppose this is an apiculture farm. They'll be growing the trees which are attracted by the honeybees, all right? So since apiculture is a study or it's in practice related to uh, rearing of honeybees, right? So, so they'll be growing the trees which are attracted or the required by the honeybees. So it can be a trees or it can be an any agriculture crop. So it's like a full um, agriculture, silviculture with the apiculture, right? And in multi-purpose woodlots, so in multi-purpose woodlots, they usually use the multi-purpose tree species, which are grown, mixed or separately or planted for various uh, purpose, which can be mainly for the fodder, for the fuel, for soil protection or any other utility, all right? So these, they usually grow these multi-purpose species in a land, which have various uh, utility and functions, all right? So these are known as the multi-purpose species. So these are basically the um, classification of agro agroforestry on the basis of the nature of structure under that on the nature of component. So this is a very important topic. So some questions might come. So since, uh, got to be clear with the uh, with what all of the these different types of systems so that in in a way even in the exams if they ask a question on the basis of examples you'll be able to answer them easily right so let's go back to the question so the coffee here the coffee based agroforestry system it belongs to which of the sylvie culture system right so the uh, number a is sylvie pastoral system number b is agri sylvie culture number c is agro sylvie pastoral number d is shelter bells and number e is wind breaks. so if you know if you know the answer since we've already discussed so it'll be much more easy for you to answer it so please don't forget to comment in the comment section and please let me know so that i'll be know whether you're being able to understand it or not okay uh, in the same way try to study for all these terms we've already discussed the present stats uh, in our previous session on the Indian State Forest Report. So I think uh, try to revise that as well, okay, as you're studying for this um, thing. And as well as the National Institute, don't forget to study the National Institute as well as the wildlife sanctuaries because forestry and wildlife, they come together. So it'll be very important if you to know all the places or the sanctuaries or the national parks as well, right? And the acts, the legislations and the policies like forest policies of 1894, uh, forest policy of 1952, uh, all of that. So, and the different types of forest, that's like social forest uh, or the community forest or all of that, try to know the definitions and understand what it is and the different types of forestry, the branches of forestry as well, okay? So all of these try to uh, study and get it clear. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much. And please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon. And if you've enjoyed this session with me, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button as well as share with your friends. Exams are coming up. So all the very best and study well. And we'll meet you for the next session.